What's up, movie lovers? It is Chase Spice Films and Foodie, and today I am going to be reviewing Wes Craven's New Nightmare. As you can tell, I'm excited already because I love New Nightmare. All right, so let's just get into it. Um, I gotta get the info out here. And uh, Wes Craven's New Nightmare came out in 1994. It's obviously directed by Wes Craven and written by him, and stars a. Uh, Heather Lingenkamp, Miko Hughes, uh, Wes Craven, Robert England, Robert Shays in there, Bob Shay, the head of New England Cinema at the time. He's probably not the head anymore, I'm going to assume. And, oh wait, crap, I gotta read the plot. Already exited out. A demonic force has chosen Freddy Krueger as its portal to the real world. Can Heather Langenkamp play the part of Nancy one last time and trap the evil trying to enter our world? Such a good concept. Alright, so I called it an amazing fresh fresh and breath air. Breath of fresh air. Freddy is finally scary again. The movie is nearly perfect. I'll talk about the cons first. There isn't enough Freddy. That's true. I don't think there's enough. Like, there's a lot of really good suspense with the earthquakes because uh, it takes place in California, so they added this little element of earthquakes. So then it's like everybody's saying, Heather, it's your dreams aren't real. They're just being caused by the earthquakes because you're scared or whatever. And she has like this stalker after her that keeps calling her. So I thought that was really good suspense and build up. Um, and the cinematography makes it feel like a lifetime movie. That That's just me trying to sound smart again. I'm pretty sure, like, I didn't care about that. I wasn't really paying attention to that because I was so invested in the story and stuff, you know? All right, so now I'm going to do the good. Is there anything else I feel is wrong? There's not enough Freddy. I don't think there's enough kills. There can maybe be, like, one more, but the ones that are there are pretty solid. I just think they might go by a bit too quick. Um. All right, so the good, the tone, it's dark and sinister, and Freddy's actually scary. Yes, it's very, like ominous and it's got that feeling of dread that the original couple movies had where it's like oh crap man what's gonna happen next and you kept watching um the characters i cared about them and the acting was great yes um and the child actually did pretty good i didn't know his name at the time miko hughes he's actually returning for a fan film that's a sequel to new nightmare with my guy dave mccray voicing freddy super excited for that and, yeah, he was amazing as Dylan. He's one of the best child actors I've ever seen. Because usually child actors, it's like, oh, they're not good. But he was so good. He was so creepy in this movie. You know, when he's, like, singing, never sleep again. Like, he was just as scary as Robert England. I'm going to be honest, man. Um, the messages about children in horror movies were cool. Yeah, I like how they added that element. This movie's kind of like sc sc Scream before Scream. Or, I mean, Jason lives that kind of credit because it's commentating, or some of the characters are commenting on slasher movies and, like, the tropes and cliches. But that's only really one scene. New Nightmare is where it starts, I'd say. And it only came out two years before Scream, but 1994, nobody cared about the slasher genre. I don't know how much money this made, but I'm going to say it didn't make a lot because it wasn't a very traditional Nightmare movie. Um, the homages to the original were great. Yeah, I'd say they worked well. Cause it, it was nice fan service, but it wasn't like, oh, come on, that's dumb. Because it felt natural. Like the bathtub scene in the original, I'm pretty sure they did a tribute to it. It was supposed to be a tribute when uh, Heather's husband in the movie, not in real life, because she's playing herself, uh, like, the gloves coming towards him, and it's like, at his crotch. And it's like, <sighs> I feel like that was supposed to be a tribute to the bathtub scene. Um... I love the meta parts on the movie. They did a great job commenting on horror movie franchises. Everything that was said was true. Yeah, that like what Wes said it was really cool that uh, this demon is becoming like uh, or is possessing. Not possessing. This demon's coming back in the form of Freddy because the movie's ended and the evil's let out. And it was really cool. And he's saying like. Everybody keeps saying, oh, the first one was the only good one. It's just kind of funny. Um, and it was weird that Wes said he wasn't involved, really, in any after part one. Because he wrote part three. He, or he wrote a draft for it. 
but that's really it. Um, the kills were awesome, even though there was less than five. I don't think I was saying part five, I was saying, that's a random number. Yeah, there's not many kills in this, but they were really good. The best part, though, it is brilliant. Oh, the concept is brilliant and terrifically executed. Yes, it is. It is a really clever idea that, like, the cast of the Nightmare on Elm Street movie, mainly Heather, are getting, like, stalked, I guess. And, yeah, stalked in the dreams by a real-life Freddy Krueger. Like, that's a really cool concept. John Saxon plays a big role in it. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw the guy who played Rod in the original movie in uh, one scene. I'm not going to spoil it. Like, this one I don't want to spoil. Part 6 I spoiled because that movie's ugh. But this one is good. So I said New Nightmare is the best sequel in the franchise on here. I don't think I would go that far. It's definitely a good one, though. Uh, I think Dream Warriors is better. But, yeah, that's actually all the thoughts that I have on this movie. I think it's a really fun, clever, cool, still dark, serious sequel. And there's not a lot of kills. There's not a lot of Freddy, but there's a lot of good build-up and acting. Heather is really good in this movie. Heather Langenkamp is really good. I think this is her best acting in the series. It's definitely better than part three. And I'd say it's better than part one because you just really feel bad for her in this situation. And she's just a very good actress in this movie. And Miko Hughes is so good. And Robert England is awesome, even though you don't see him a lot. But you didn't really see him a lot in the first movie either. But I feel like this movie, they should have had a bit more screen time from him. Because it's the seventh movie in the franchise, you know. But, yeah, that's going to be it for today. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for Freddy vs. Jason. So, this is Jason Spice Films and Food. And I'm saying bye. Bye.